Hey folks, it's Billy DKY, the truth seeker that simplifies and demystifies. This is going to be WEC 45, post-fight commentary, Donald Cerrone versus Ed Radcliffe. I'll tell you what, this was a good card. The whole thing was just real good. You know, had a lot of good scrapping on there. And uh, so let's see, let's get started with uh, round one. Donald Cerrone comes out strong, which... I I don't think you should go against your natural tendency. If you're a slow starter, man, you're just a slow starter, you know. Don't violate that first principle of my blog, which is baby steps. You know, maybe you can step it up a little bit, but, you know, Ed Redclaff was making Donald look bad there at the beginning because Donald was trying to start out fast when he shouldn't have. So, I think he needs to rethink that uh, stuff he's doing with his psychiatrist and whatnot. Anyway, like I said, Ed was looking really good, and I was afraid Donald was going to get knocked out because it looked like he's about to. Round two comes along, and there's a point where you could just tell Cerrone just started taking over, and it started in the in the first round a little bit, and then it just started taking over in the second round. There's a point where I could just tell that Ed was broken, but his pride wouldn't let him quit. So, you know, you have to give your hats off to Ed. He did a great job, and you know, and with those um, groin strikes unintentional strikes to the groin that almost put Donald in a predicament, you know, winning the fight, but then, then potentially losing our decision. You know, I didn't really like it when uh, Cerrone's being all cute because, you know, you just don't do it, man. You can be cute after the fight or before the fight, but while you're fighting, you need to be taking care of business. So he really needs to just quit being cute. But with that said, Cerrone did a damn good job. And those it's really his leg kicks is really what made the huge difference in that fight. I mean, he just he just kicking him and kick, kick here, kick there, kick there, and and Ned really didn't have you know any real answers for that, and that seemed like really is what broke him. And you have to give it your hats off to uh, Ed. He was pretty gracious in defeat, and you know that's a sign of good character. Anyway, next fight: uh, Anthony Kajohawani versus Chris Horodeki, or however you say it. Man, that guy looked like a little kid. He's 22 years old. And I've always wanted to see a guy running away like that, not paying attention, thinking he's safe and getting head kicked. And boom, he just tagged him. First, I thought it might have been a little bit of a quick stoppage. But then after the, you know, after they showed a little bit of the fight, man, his eye looked bad. So, But you got to give it to him, man. He had a solid chin. He got rocked. And he was still, his eyes were still there. So, I don't know. That's a good job, uh, Anthony. Kojawani, or how you, however you say it. Again, don't don't criticize me, not because I don't really want to hear it. <laughs> okay. Uh, Joseph Benavides, Benavides versus Ronnie Ayahia. When I first started, the first note I wrote down on this fight is female refer referee. And I was like, man, I don't know about this. This don't, something about this don't seem right. Then, you know, they're doing a little bit of thing. And then, boom. Yaya gets gets rocked with a shot. He never went limp, not once. I mean, he was struggling to regain his position and always in a bad spot, but he never was in a limp position or where he was giving up. And even after the referee stopped it, he was got up faster than the referee did. I'm like, come on, folks. I mean, I I didn't want to see that. I want to see this guy at least get a shot. You know, he's trained probably 12 weeks or more. Not to mention that all, all he's done his whole life training. You don't want to see something like that. And I was just like trying to get over her being that being a female referee. I was like, you know what? I need to not be judgmental. And boom, there she goes. She stops it early. I don't know. Maybe it had nothing to do with female, being a female. Who knows? I didn't like it. Okay. Takiya Mizugaki versus Scott. Horgen, I can't even say him now, Mark, he's messed up. Anyway, you know who I'm talking about. Basically, basically, Scott overpowers Mitsugaki, and that's basically what this all boils down to. And uh, let's see, I have a few things. Uh, boy, Scott has some serious power, man. He hit, he hit uh, Mitsugaki, and man, he, he rocked him. But the problem I've seen with... Uh, Scott was he didn't he didn't know how to finish he instead of he just charged in emotional and like he wasn't thinking and I think what he really needed to do was strike 
and then you hurt the guy, and then you need to calm down, and then you need to submit the guy, because he didn't really have a you know a high um, finishing submission on him anyway. So, and again, I the guy I think the guy's relying a little too much on his power, and he needs to learn the fundamental principle of fighting: use your energy wisely. So anyway, and you can see in the second round that he, he he didn't use his energy wisely in the first round. He's forcing his will. And then on the second round, you sort of see the tides turning a little bit. I ain't saying it was like a big shift, but it was, it was enough I started noticing it. And I was thinking, that, you know, if this went five rounds, he probably could have beat Scott, you know, or at least had a solid chance of it because the tides just kept on changing. But really, he could have stopped in the first round if he had just... You know, calm down, use his energy a little bit wiser, and so anyway, you got to give him, both of them. They did a great job, and uh, I wouldn't mind to see Scott fight uh, Miguel Torres. I think that would be a good fight because I don't think Miguel, I think Miguel would have more answers for him, but who knows? Brandon Vischer versus Courtney Buck. I Buck comes out, man, he does that one kick, he did a straight kick up, and it looked like he hit like this with his toes. I was like, oh, man, it looked like he about broke his own toes kicking that guy, get kicking that guy, and that was a great, great, basically that boils down, that was one hell of a scrap, and uh, good referee, you know, didn't have any early stoppage or anything, so uh, I always like when we have good refs. Okay, Brad Pickett versus Kyle Dentz. Um... I love it when a guy stands over another guy, stands all egotistical, and the guy up kicks him or kicks the knee backwards a little bit. I'm like, man, just back off. Either jump in or back off. Get over the, you know, that egotistical stand over you stuff. Uh, I thought that was a really good switch, too. When he had him in the guillotine, he switched it and reversed it and got into his, I think he got into his guard. But, uh, so anyway, that was, that was nice. And that was a really nice Peruvian necktie by Brad. And, uh, I don't know if any of y'all noticed this. It looked like Brad picked up his tooth or something after the fight. Like he picked it, or picked it out of his mouthpiece or something and put it back in or something. I don't know. It's sort of funny. Anyway, folks, that's all I really have to say on uh, WEC 45, Donald Cerrone versus Ed Radcliffe. And until next time, folks, later, folks.